Good morning, everybody. This is a live update. Uh, this is a live update on the tropics uh, for Tropical Cyclone Marco and Tropical Cyclone Laura uh, that are out in the, uh, in the Caribbean. Uh, Marco is just to the east of uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. Laura is actually out uh, just to the south of Puerto Rico. Um, and so both of these storms, I do expect additional surprises with the forecast and with the intercept plans of these storms. A complex interaction is expected uh, ahead for these two storms with both tropical cyclones possible in the Gulf of Mexico at some point early next week. Marco, though, appears to be exploding this morning, uh, definitely intensifying. There is an eye wall uh, that has been indicated uh, by uh, 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 on radar uh, out of Cuba. Uh, but here you can see that system just to the east of the Yucatan. Yesterday, it was forecast to come ashore across the northern Yucatan, interact with land, and that would have slowed it down just a little bit. In fact, look at this supercell. Uh, down here in northeastern Belize uh, overnight that just anchored over that inlet there. Uh, who knows if that was producing water spouts, uh, possibly. Uh, but you can see the convective explosion. You can see the transverse banding and the outflow pattern aloft. When you zoom out, you can in general uh, see a decent uh, anticyclonic uh, curvature to the upper level clouds above the system, leading to venting over that convection and allowing it uh, to intensify this morning. These are the official uh, hurricane forecasting tracks here on the Radar Omega app. Uh, and I suspect that this will be shifted a little bit further east. I expect in the 11 a.m. also uh, for Marco uh, to strengthen into a Category 1 hurricane. I wouldn't be surprised if Marco is a little bit further east than this track and could even impact portions of the central uh, Gulf Coast uh, by early next week. We've got a plan for all different scenarios because I do expect more forecast surprises with these two systems. Looking off to the east, you can see Tropical Storm Laura which I believe is going to be much further south. I think that the models are underestimating the strength of that Bermuda High off to the north that has been blocking these systems from turning off to the north and forcing them to enter into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it does uh, look to me like this blob of convection is a little bit further south. Of course, you'll need to have a hurricane reconnaissance aircraft to determine whether the center is going to be a little bit further south than this. The National Hurricane Center has the center on the north side of this convective blob, a little bit closer to Puerto Rico. But I wouldn't be surprised if this forecast track is even south of the Greater Antilles, south of uh, Hispaniola, maybe even just south of Cuba. But uh, right now, the uh, uh, official National Hurricane Center track is directly over the heart of these very mountainous islands. Hispaniola, Hispaniola Cuba have very high mountainous terrain, and that's likely going to uh, tear this storm apart. Uh, if it moves directly over that, but then it reemerges over the Gulf of Mexico, uh, eventually to the north of Cuba, to the west of Florida, and that's when this uh, Laura could easily ramp up. Uh, the National Hurricane Center uh, has uh, this system just off the coast of Louisiana as a stout Category 1 hurricane, but there's a lot of uncertainty with the intensity forecast, its interaction with land. Uh, those are going to be very complicated. Here you can see both of those storms. And a lot of it depends on the evolution of that Bermuda High as it propagates a little bit to the west. Marco seems to be turning to the north on the western periphery of that Bermuda High as it is slowly starting to propagate westward. That big anticyclonic blob uh, that's the Bermuda High is going to slide to the west. And look at Laura that's also intensifying with that uh, convection down there. But as of this morning, the stronger of the two storms is Marco. And uh, our plan... I'm in Kansas right now, and uh, our plan is to head to Atlanta. We've got the subsonic sensor that Mark uh, sent through FedEx that arrived just in time yesterday. We're going to be deploying uh, the uh, subsonic sensor and measuring infrasound waves in the eye of the hurricane, uh, whatever hurricane we intercept. And uh, that'll be some unprecedented data that I think has never been collected inside the heart of a hurricane to basically measure the heartbeat of these tropical storms, uh, the presence of MCVs or tornado-like vortices in their eye walls as they're making landfall. The presence of supercell water spouts in the outer bands are going to be possible with that. We also have the Windy Palms project of Mike Tice. He's coming up in the Herve, where the Hurricane Eye Wall Research Vehicle will be mounting those to the tops of palm trees. And we have the live streaming sensors of Radar Omega. I'm going to have one of those mounted on the roof of Dominator 4, so you'll be able to see all this in real time. I'm also going to be streaming uh, here on Facebook, of course. Uh, that's uh, made possible by the Facebook supporter community. Uh, that also makes possible our Team Dominator Science, as well as live storm chasing and these live, uh, live uh, uh, weather brief briefings. But all kinds of stuff happening. You can see these dual storms, and as they both move into the Gulf of Mexico by early next week, it's possible they could come within 
about 100 miles of each other and really start interacting through what we call the Fujiwara effect. Now let's uh, move forward. I want to show you these new latest models. And again, there's a lot of uncertainty with these intensities. Uh, the tracks are a little bit more certain, but even the tracks are quite uncertain because of the complex evolution ahead with the potential of Fujiwara effect. The models not necessarily being able to handle the anti-cyclone or the Bermuda high and how that's going to evolve. But these are the morning uh, intensity models of the hurricane models for Marco. And uh, one thing uh, to note is that there has been an increase in the intensity uh, and that's because they're picking up on the fact that Marco is likely going to remain over open water during the entire evolution instead of passing over the northern Yucatan and potentially being a weaker system. Uh, a stronger Marco relative to tropical cyclone Laura uh, would reduce the impact or the potential of Marco of recurving back to the left, stalling out offshore and even bending back toward Mexico. I think that a stronger Marco will dominate uh, the evolution uh, between these two tropical cyclones and possibly even head north toward the central Gulf Coast. So anywhere in the Gulf Coast from Texas, even all the way to the western coast of Florida needs to watch both Tropical Storm Marco and uh, Tropical Storm Laura as they progress. Uh, but this is definitely uh, an, uh, an update to watch as these uh, intensity uh, hurricane models are starting to realize that Marco is going to be over open water. And here are the forecast tracks. You can still see a pretty substantial uh, spread between these tracks. Some of them showing a weaker Marco bending back to the left. Others uh, show it curving more to the north to the, toward the central Gulf Coast with a stronger Bermuda high. And as I mentioned, all of that depends on the uh, evolution of this uh, Bermuda high out here. Here's the anti-cyclone spinning uh, and it's a little bit further west uh, than the uh, traditional location of the Bermuda High centered over Bermuda even all the way to the Azores across the Atlantic and the position of this Bermuda High determines whether tropical cyclones in the Atlantic recurve to the north and become fish storms or do they head all the way west into the Caribbean and eventually the Gulf of Mexico 2005 all of those uh, big powerful storms are coming into the Gulf of Mexico basin which is a very warm uh, warm body of water can really intensify those storms. So it looks like this year we're seeing a, a little westward position of the Bermuda High and that's causing these storms to uh, have U.S. impacts and that could be both Marco or Laura, could be one of those storms. Um, I think that at least one of those is going to impact the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, the update so far this morning is I think Marco is going to be a more stout tropical cyclone with a further east track Eventually, it could bend back to the west uh, with some Fujiwara interaction. Uh, but I think that this Bermuda High is going to propagate a little bit further west than the models indicate. And that's going to cause uh, Marco to turn off to the north toward the central Gulf Coast. And then Laura could enter the picture, depending on how it interacts with the land over the Greater Antilles. And then that could call it, cause a Fujiwara interaction, some stalling out tropical cyclones, a lot of rain, a lot of flooding. The key is just to stay tuned to this forecast because there's a lot of surprises ahead as we move forward and I think we're only going to see more of those surprises. Uh, but this was the, uh, uh, the uh, structure of the Bermuda High as of when this model was initi initialized this morning. Looking at the 72 hour forecast, notice how it propagates to the west. And then you've got potentially south to north steering flow on the west side of that Bermuda High uh, centered over the southeastern U.S. and extending uh, across the uh, Atlantic Basin there that's going to be a blocking feature to prevent Laura from turning to the north and it's even resulting in a further south track that it could even move south of the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola and Cuba and then enter the Gulf as an even stronger system. But that's a complex evolution between Marco and Laura that the models are not necessarily handling very well. Uh, so we're just going to have to see what happens as we move forward in time and expect the unexpected. But my gut feeling is that Marco as a stronger storm in this Bermuda High a little bit further west than many of the models are showing and happening earlier in the time period is going to cause Marco to drift north toward the central Gulf Coast, potentially being a hurricane as it gets close to the central Gulf Coast. And then Laura is going to enter the picture, possibly cause a stall out of Marco, uh, maybe even moving along or just inland on the Gulf Coast with a major, major uh, flood threat down there. And then if Laura comes in as a pretty intense storm, it could take a similar track, maybe just to the east of wherever Marco comes in. But anywhere along the Gulf Coast, all the way, I mean, even all the way down to Mexico, needs to keep an eye on both of these storms because of the complex evolution expected ahead.
So again, looking at the uh, infrared satellite and those tracks, uh, those two systems that are out here to monitor. We've got Tropical Cyclone Laura off to the east. We've got Marco just to the east of the Yucatan. We're going to head to uh, Atlanta uh, to get this live streaming uh, uh, station on the roof. And then we're going to drop down toward the central Gulf Coast. We're going to meet up with the HERV, Mike Tice, and the Hurricane Iowa research vehicle coming up uh, from South Florida. Uh, we're going to meet up in the central Gulf Coast and then intercept likely both of these storms now uh, because there is going to be a little bit of a timing difference between the two. So I do think that we're going to have an opportunity to intercept both of these tropical cyclones. So stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned to the, uh, uh, this very complicated forecast. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center official tracks and definitely heed uh, those evacuations uh, moving forward. We're going to hit the road. We've got a long road ahead uh, here. Uh, so thank you, uh, Facebook supporters, for making live storm chasing, live briefings, and our team dominator science possible. And uh, we're going to chase these storms both of them and the tornadoes in their outer bands as they uh, interact complexly. So thank you, everybody. Have a good Saturday. I hope you enjoy my weather reports. I'll be live a little bit later on in our journey as we're heading off to the east.